Okay, thank you. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm going to talk about this uh, new drug target validation, uh, identification and prioritization web platform that we've been demonstrating. We released it yesterday. There's one uh, message I want you to take home from the talk. It's that it's available at targetvalidation.org. And so I'll take questions. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we have to go on. So this, this is a product of the, the CTTV uh, uh, collaboration, the public-private partnership between GSK, EBI, and Sa the Sanger Institute. Just brief background, you'll hear more about this later. The idea is to provide experimental and computational approaches to enable transformational change in selecting and validating targets. Uh, we're based largely on the Genome Campus, and we share all the findings openly, so there's no restriction on any of this data. And we think that by pooling the expertise of the three organizations and others who may come in to join, we can uh, actually achieve this goal. So the program that we've got going it really has two sides. There's an experimental data generation side, which I'm not going to talk about, but Jeff Barrett will later tomorrow. And then there's a bioinformatics side of putting together public databases and pipelines that feed uh, into a target validation platform through which we release the data. Eventually, as the experimental data comes in, we hope this should also go in this kind of virtuous cycle into the platform, and then hypotheses come out into the experimental data as well. So now just concentrating on what we're trying to do with targetvalidation.org. It's really about enabling easy access to the relevant evidence that describes the association between a target, a potential drug target and disease. And it's that enabling easy access that we want to, to, to prioritize. So the idea of the platform is that it should be intuitive. You should be able to go there and understand what you're seeing straight away. And really, it's driven by the user. So it's not about me as a scientist saying, this is what you should have. It's about the user saying, these are the kinds of information that we want. This is how we expect to see them. This is how we could see them. How can we integrate them together? Behind the platform, we require to model some of those complex research approaches, so modeling some of the genetics. Uh, we also need sustainable infrastructure so we can take that data from public domain databases and, and feed it into the platform. And we've also got to be obviously timely, relevant, and, and integrated. But chiefly, it's the idea of having this intuitive interface that we want to achieve in this first version. These are the technologies that we're using at the moment. We won't go into any of that for now. So, Underneath the, the platform, the philosophy is really, can we provide a summary of the evidence that relates a target to a disease or phenotype? And it's this very simple model of what is the evidence that is saying that this is associated with this phenotype? We describe the targets using the standard kinds of gene nomenclature, uh, ensemble IDs. We integrate synonyms from proteins, et cetera through so you can identify the target. And then on the other side, in the disease side, we use an ontology which is called the experimental factor ontology to relate diseases to each other, which now allows us to build up a hierarchy and move smoothly between different disease, diseases or phenotypes. And then the chief guts of it all is in this, this little ball here, which is what's the evidence? And for that, we're not trying to reproduce the uh, databases of record but what we're trying to do is take the information from each of these databases that addresses that specific problem of the association between target and disease. So, for instance, from Uniprot, which is the database that has a lot of curated information about protein function, uh, we want to take what's the relationship between those proteins and disease that's been curated. So the, this experimental factor ontology is key to moving around, here's just an example here of Crohn's disease. You can view that on, on the website uh, for, the, for the ontology of how it sits in relation to inflammatory bowel disease. And this is evolving all the time, and we want to improve it. But so far, we have about 9,600 ontology classes. 
the important thing about this, this, this ontology is it includes other ontologies. So a lot of the work is done from the distributed annotation that goes on around the world. In the current release of the data, what we've done is to integrate these nine different sources of, of data um, that we think are relevant. So data about marketed drugs, what's the association between the target for the drug and the disease that it's indicated for? Are there pathways that, are, uh, that have um, mutations in that can be causally linked to disease? And we get that from reactome. Are there somatic mutations in cancer, in the cancer gene census that we can use that say that this gene is uh, a driver in, in, in tumor genesis? Are there rare genetic mutations uh, either uh, from Uniprot or from the experimental, uh, the European Variation Archive that link a mutation in that gene to a disease? Similarly, we've heard a lot now just about uh, GWAS, uh, and complex disease, so we take data initially from the GWAS catalog on the lead SNPs. We want later to expand that to get the, um, the full association signals, um, but at the moment we're using the GWAS catalog. And we also take data from mouse models where we've mapped, the, or the, where the phenodyne project has mapped the phenotypes from the mouse to the human uh, disease profile. And RNA expression uh, data on disease comparisons and text mining, where we look for co-occurrences of the target and disease in the text from public literature. As I said, the key is to get this driven by the users. So we, the approach we use is to design and test collaboratively with the user and to find out what they want. Does it work for them? Here you can see a number of the testing sessions that we've done. You know, people drawing th on things that look like an iPad or an iPhone. How should the display work? And then we do a number of different uh, interviews, workshops, prototyping and evaluation to try to get the workflow through the platform right. And it's been a great help to have 100 beta testers in GSK who've been working on this at various times, giving us feedback on how the platform has evolved. This just gives you a, a typical example of a session with a group of users, the different colors of their comments on the different features. Uh, you can read various of the comments. So do they like the thing? Does it confuse them? Uh, should it be changed? How would they change it? That kind of thing. Okay, so I'm going to do a platform tour. I'm not going to do a demo uh, because you can see outside at the stall, uh, the CTTV stall, there's a couple of computers there where you can drive for yourself. If you want to follow along on your laptop, you can do. There's also at the poster, I'll have my computer there as well today, uh, so we can demo there if you want. So there's a couple of concepts that we have. One is of a, a workflow. So how do you get from a disease through associations to the evidence for disease, or from a target through the associations to disease to the evidence that supports that? The other concept is filters. So if you have a set of associations, can you filter them by the types of data that support them and by the therapeutic area that's involved or by which pathways they uh, occur in, the t in those specific targets? And then the final concept is profiles. Once you've identified a target that you're interested in, what ancillary information is there that you'd want to see uh, to try to uh, assess whether that target is of interest for you and your approach to drugging it? And so that would be in this target profile page. So here, just uh, on, on the slides, I'll show you an example of a search. So this is the home page you get to at targetvalidation.org. Type in the disease name, asthma. Uh, it has some intelligence behind it. It recognizes that I'm, I'm searching for asthma. Uh, and I can click there and go on to the next stage. Or maybe I was looking for child onset asthma or some other phenotype that I can ser could select instead. In this case, I was looking for asthma, and I get a, a, a disease association page where I see the targets associated with asthma. And the idea here is it's a kind of a blue heat map, that the overall association score is on this left-hand column, and then the evidence that come from the different data sources, genetics, somatic mutation, not relevant here, obviously, drugs, pathways, RNA expression, text mining, and animal models is shown by the color of the blue box. And the darkness of that color reflects 
the amount of association that there is. I can filter the data, so I'm only interested in genetics, say, in this audience. Click on the genetics, so I now only see evidence, or I, know I only see associations where evidence comes from genetics. I can filter again and say I'm only interested in things that are in signal transduction pathways, and I'm now down to a much smaller subset of targets that might be interested. Let's say I was interested in PDE4D. I can click on that. I go to an association page. There's a summary of the evidence score in this little flower petal. You know that it's this target, this disease. And there's a series of boxes here where the dark colors show where there's data. So I can open those up. There's one GWAS here that associates this to uh, uh, asthma. It's a relatively high p-value. You can also see that in a little browser um, here, which is just a, a shows you where that SNP is. Uh, this is the one that's associated. These are other associations for this gene uh, that have been found. I can do the same for a target. So if I'm interested in BRAF, type BRAF, and I get a different display. This is a kind of bubbles view. Here again, the colors represent the level of the association, the amount of evidence that there is, but now they're grouped by therapeutic area. So the big one, obviously, is in neoplasm, but there are other uh, therapeutic areas as well. So if I was interested in skin disease, I can click here and zoom in specifically on the associations for skin disease, where you see, of course, melanoma and a number of other associations. And the data here largely is coming from the cancer gene census. If I was interested in BRAF uh, a bit more, I can go out to this profile page, see data in a graphical form that's coming from Uniprot, start to see things like where the, the binding sites are, and so on. There is also information in pathways and uh, the bibliography, the target family, et cetera, et cetera. And all of this is pulled in in these little widgets uh, that we get from outside. So in summary, we'd like you to try this out. If you like it, give us feedback at support at targetvalidation.org. If you don't like it, give us feedback as well. Does it do things that are useful to you? Does it help answer questions that it has? Is it intuitive? Are there other data sources or other analytic procedures that you'd like to see represented? We're interested in all of that kind of information. If you want to hear about uh, forthcoming releases, you can uh, email contact at targetvalidation.org. You'll get uh, put on a mailing list. This is obviously the work of a large number of people. The core platform development team here, this group of people has done a lot of work um, to put this together, but supported by the various uh, sort of tendrils within EBI and the Sanger Institute, uh, where we get data provision, the leadership team, and a large input from GSK beta testers. Just a couple of other points. So you don't have to have any user account to use this. You just go to the website, uh, and it's public data. Uh, and the platform is public. GSK, for instance, doesn't have access to the logs of what you enter. They're not going to be monitoring this. Um, and I'll stop there. <laughs>